everyone welcome back to studio 33 art by k today i'm going to be doing a 20 centimeter by 20 centimeter ceramic tile and i'm going to do a reverse flower dip as per how or basically how fiona art teaches it um, certainly she is who i've learned from and i'm sure mine won't turn out anywhere near as good as hers hers are just wonderful um, but what i'm going to be using i'm going to use a um, bottle bottom that I've cut off from a um, bottle of soft drink. I'm not sure which one this was. I've had this for a while. Um, so it's got one, two, three, four, five different grooves. And I've just cut a little V in underneath as well to allow some of the paint to run in underneath to give me my center. Um, so I'm just going to lay down, I've just cleaned this with uh, isopropyl alcohol. Um, and that's all you need to do to prepare a tile before you paint on it. And I'm just laying down some white paint, which is just the Araldo and also Global white paints mixed together because I had a few um, just there waiting to be used up. So I've been finding lately that the best way to um, cover the tile smoothly is to put it on like I just did and then just run it to the edges. And um, that way it's nice and smooth. And then I'll just finish off the very edge by um, just using a little, in this case, it's a one of these little uh, craft sticks. But you can see how smooth the middle of that is compared to where I'm actually applying it um, with the stick. Make sure that you've always covered your sides so that if the... Um, flower does run over the edge, which it may well do, um, that it's got something there already, and that means your edges are all neat and tidy already as well. I'm just quickly putting that on. Hopefully I'll be running it across the back properly. Just have a quick look. Yep. And on the side. Okay, so as you can see where I um, tilted, the paint is beautiful and smooth and then where I'm doing it um, with the stick, you know, it's still, you can see a few little grooves and bumps, but it will dry flat. It's just that when you're putting something on and you want the paint to flow, the smoother the base is, the better. So now I'm going to put this hopefully close to the middle. Now the way that you can actually work out the middle is to get a couple of skewers. Uh, which I shall get out. Oops, that one's no good. And just basically lie them across the middle from corner to corner. Drop it down, pick it back up, and then do the same the other way. And pick it back up. And where the two Crossed, which was there that's your middle so I'll pop that down there hopefully it'll be there it's a little lump there rolling off get rid of that okay so now what we do is we pour the paint into the middle and today I'm using the Vallejo pearl medium and Amsterdam titanium white. Now all my paints have been mixed with Australian Floetrol and I will put the colours in the description box below and you get to that by clicking on the title of this video but that won't work if you're on a smart TV so you need to be on a mobile phone or a um, some sort of other device. So I'm just going to start off by pouring the Vallejo in the middle. Hardest part is to get this to run evenly. But you don't have to worry too much because if it's not perfect, well, nothing in nature is perfect, so it doesn't really matter too much. This is a Raldo Pinky, which is a lovely um, bright pink, as you can see. Actually, I'll put the lighter colour first. This is the um, Araldo Rose. So I think I'll do two colours and then the Vallejo and then two colours in the Vallejo. So I'll put Pinky next. 
gives a lovely colour. And then the Vallejo. And then I've got the Global Magenta. And then I might put below. Mm, no, I'll go pinky. And then the Vallejo. Now the light pink. Pinky. A bit of Vallejo, not too much. Put, try and put less of that than the others. Magenta. I don't know why this always happens to me. Where I get the one going closer to the edge than the others, even though I'm not on my turntable this time, so I don't know. Maybe the table's not completely level. Although when I use a level, it shows that it is level, so anyway. Um, next colour, I'll put some more Vallejo. Okay, I won't do too many more. I'm not sure how much of my paint will have gone underneath or not. And finish off with the magenta. Then I'll just get my straw and just gently blow on that, get all the paint off. Now I just use a meat skewer. This is interesting how I'm getting this jagged line going around here. I've never seen that happen before. So I'm just going to draw straight through the flower like that for each petal. And now I'm going to do a quarter turn so that the paints are going to go in between the petals now. Now this guy is already trying to roll off. Um, I'll try and turn this whole thing around. If it is the table that's a bit crooked or un unlevel, it should start rolling back the other way. So I don't want to do too many through the middle here. I'll just do a couple of colours. I'll do the one, one run of all the colours. Just doing three colours all together. And then finish off with the magenta. And now I'm just going to lift that off. Straight off. Doesn't look like my colours ran in underneath at all. Um, which is what I would hope would happen. It's interesting how we've got all this here and I'm not sure why. Um, 
don't know. Oh, wait, I think it's where I had those little grooves underneath and that's what they've done instead of the paint flowing underneath. How interesting. Okay, so now I'm just going to put a little puddle in the middle um, of the colours to create a centre. And then a little bit of gold to finish it off. I must say, I did one of these um, previously where I put the ballet slipper as the base colour and I really liked it a lot better, actually, to tell you the truth. Still, so, this is nice. So now I'm going to run those little petals that I did. I'm going to run the colour from them into the centre. Just to create a center. Whoop. And now I'm going to come in between the petals as well. Hopefully. Mm. Now maybe from the centre would be better, like that. It's better. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is take a dry piece of paper towel. This is the Viva brand. Um, we have here in Australia and it's got these ribs on it and I find sometimes that gives us sort of a ribbed edge I'm actually losing this guy over here could mean my base is a bit um, too fluid and it's allowing the paints to spread too much which is uh, annoying but anyway so I'm just going to place this make it square Consistency is key, as they say. And where my base was a bit too thin, it, yeah, it's letting the paints run too much. Um, so I'm just going to place this in the middle, let it drop down, and go all the way over. And I'm just going to make sure I've got rid of all the air bubbles out from under there. And now we're bringing each corner up into the center. So try and get as close to the actual center as possible. Because when you lift, you don't want to skew your pattern if you can help it. Now just bring up the other corners as well into the middle. This guy I've lost. And there's somewhere up to the center. And now hopefully if I lift straight up in the middle, it won't be too skewed. And lift. Hmm, it's slightly skewed. Okay, so I'm just gonna hit that with the heat embossing tool. This will burst any bubbles, but also help to bring up the lacing. I'm going to um, draw some shape in here because because my base was too thin I've kind of lost the shape and there's a lot of paint there too so I'm just gently drawing in the shape again like that Mm. 
and bring these out again. I always seem to get one that runs over the edge, regardless of whether I'm on a turntable or on the cups. I don't know why that happens to me. Maybe someone else knows, they can let me know. Now I'm just going to do a little bit of embellishing on this, not embellishing, but um, modification. So I'm just going to bring these guys through like that. Until this base was definitely too wet, too thin I should say. So every time I use the heat embossing tool, it sort of brings up more definition. So that's quite a pretty piece. It's not, it didn't turn out like I, exactly like I wanted it to. But um, it is quite pretty nonetheless. So um, that's it for today, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed that one. And um, I'll bring you down for a close-up. Okay, so here we come down for the close-up of this quite lovely piece, really. Um, it didn't turn out exactly how I wanted. It's gone over the edges more than I would have liked, but that's okay. You're never going to get exactly what you want. Um, the Vallejo is certainly not disappointed as usual with this lovely lacing. Around the edges here, you can see the slightly different effect here, and uh, that's from using that ribbed paper towel. So it's quite lovely, as I say. Beautiful edging there. some very nice um, lacing and so on so that's that for today guys I did um, touch up my edges where I've done the lift with the paper towel it did um, take some paint off the edges there oops and um, so I did put some more on there also checked to make sure my edges were covered and then wiped all the drips from underneath if you don't wipe those drips from underneath they can keep drawing the paint off and when you go back to check on your piece in an hour or so time you can find that half of it will be on the table so always check those drips okay all right so um that's it for today and hopefully you enjoyed that one and i'll see you back here in studio 33 in the not too distant future until then stay safe bye bye <music>